Well, praise the Lord, everyone. Welcome. Come together again on another Sunday evening. Amen. To delve into the Word of God, to see the Word of God, understand, be directed by this Word and by God's Spirit to bring us into all truth and lead us and guide us on that straight and narrow path to heaven. Amen. Very important topic tonight God's laid on my spirit to speak on. And something that's very, probably one of the most important things in the New Testament, but it goes all the way back through the Old Testament as well. And probably one of the most misinterpreted and misunderstood principles in the Bible. You can find all kinds of things about it. Most of them very untrue. The topic we're going to talk about tonight, the thing God has laid on my heart, is grace. Amen? Grace. Dear Heavenly Father, we just come before you right now in Jesus' name. God, asking you bless our understanding. Bring us, Lord God, to an understanding of your grace. Lord God, hallelujah, what your grace is, what your grace means, and what it's for, Lord. We'll be careful to give you all glory, honor, and praise tonight in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. All right, praise the Lord. We're going to talk about grace tonight, amen. Grace. What is grace? Well, let's, go, let's look at the dictionary's definition of grace, okay? And there's more than one. Grace. First, a simple elegance or refinement of movement. Two, elegance, stylishness, courtesy, courteousness, politeness, manners, good manners. In a Christian sense, a Christian belief, the free and unmerited favor of God is manifested in the salvation of sinners and the bestowal of blessings. Okay, let's look more. So far, all of these are actually right and actually line up with the biblical uh, definition of grace, amen? Uh, let's see, favor, goodwill, generosity, kindness, benefaction, benevolence, beneficence. These are all definitions of the word grace, amen? Now, in the Christian realm, we simply define grace as the unmerited favor of God or the undeserved or the unearned favor of God, amen? And it is that and it is so much more, amen? Grace, what is grace? Grace is the personality of God. Grace is the love of God, amen, toward his creation. Grace is the unmerited favor of God. Grace is all those things we just read in the definition. Grace is beautiful. Grace is, is poised. Grace is proper, amen? The grace of God is God's desire for us to be with him and saved. Grace is God's mercy extended to us, amen? And we can find grace all throughout the Bible, the Old Testament and New Testament. A lot of people like to say, well, God was a, a hard God, a God of war in the Old Testament. There was no grace or mercy, but I beg to differ. God has not changed. He's the same God as he was then as he is now, and he has not changed, and grace has always been there. Grace has always been part of God's plan for men, God's extension to men, amen? Let's go to the book of Genesis, chapter 6. We're talking about the destruction here of mankind at Noah's time, okay? And God deciding he, would, he shouldn't have made men because they were so evil all the time. They were always so easily led off by the devil into wickedness and sin and evil. They enjoyed evil. Uh, gener, uh, gener, uh, excuse me, Genesis chapter 6, verses 7 8, read like this. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth. Both man and beast and the creeping thing and the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. So God was almost sorry he made us, amen? Made mankind, made anything because they were so wicked and evil. They grieved God so bad that he was almost sorry that he made them. Verse eight, watch this. But Noah, right, Noah, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. So even back then, grace was a part of God's plan, part of God's nature, a part of him, amen? And Noah and his family <clears throat> found grace 
Amen, in the sight of God, in the eyes of God. And what happened? God told Noah to build an ark. And after Noah built an ark, 120 years of preaching repentance, that's the grace of God, giving people a chance to repent. Noah preached and warned them what was to come as he built this giant boat. And when the boat was finished, <clears throat> they gathered up all types and numbers of animals to take on that boat. And we see all these animals that would normally kill each other, eat each other, and eat people walking peacefully onto this boat. That is the grace and mercy of God. I'm sure they weren't, didn't see that every day. Animals that would normally devour them walking past them tame, amen? So this is the grace of God. We see the grace of God in that. And then we see once the ark was finished, all the animals, everything was loaded up, that God put a door on that ark so big that only God could shut the door. Amen. So the ark was finished, everything was loaded up, and the Bible tells us that God left the ark door open for seven days. Everything and everybody was on, why would God leave the door open seven days more? Grace. Grace to just in case, just in case. And God already knew they wouldn't. But just in case, he so loved his creation, was so merciful, was so graceful, that he let that ark door open seven days just for hope somebody would say, hey, you know what? This is all too much to say is coincidence or deny. I'm getting on that boat. God left the ark door open seven days. That is grace. That is the grace of God, amen? But at the end of that seven days, the Bible said God himself closed the door of the ark, slammed it shut, and that was it. Once the door was closed, grace was gone, everything was done, and judgment was coming. And it did, in fact, come shortly after that. The earth flooded all, everything left man and beast on the earth died, amen? But there was grace of God for all those days. 120 years of building the ark and preaching, and in seven more days, God left the door open, showing his grace, amen? That is, grace has always been with us. Grace is not just a New Testament principle. It was in the Old Testament as well, amen? Let's look at the book of Exodus. We're going to go to Exodus chapter 33, verses 12 through 14. And we're talking about Moses now, okay? And Moses said unto the Lord, See, thou sayest unto me, Bring up this people, and thou hast not let me know whom thou wilt send with me. Yet thou hast said, I know thee by name, and thou hast also found grace in my sight. There's the grace of God to, know, uh, to Moses. Now Moses is speaking here to God. Now therefore, I pray thee, if I have found grace, <coughs> excuse me, grace in thy sight, show me now thy way that I may know thee, that I may find grace in thy sight and consider that this nation is thy people. Now here's no... Uh, Moses, excuse me, talking a whole lot about grace in the Old Testament, amen? Making a bargain with God if he's found grace in his sight to give him understanding and direction and what he needed to know that these people were gonna be God's people, amen? And in verse 14, and he said, my presence shall go with thee and I will give thee rest. God's grace extended all through the Old Testament so far. We see it in to Noah. We see it to Moses. Amen. Let's drop down to Psalms, the book of Psalms 84 and 11 and 12. We see the grace of God extended to David. And it says, for the Lord God is a sun and a shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. So you see, get God's grace and promises of goodness and blessing will not be held withheld from any of those who what? Walk uprightly, who do right in the sight of God. Amen. And this is bringing us to another point very quickly here. Okay. The grace is extended for a purpose. Amen. We see here, the grace of God is there and no good thing will be held would be will, will be withheld from them that walk uprightly. Verse 12, O Lord of hosts, blessed is the man that trusteth in thee. Okay? We see some conditions already here too, so 
to some of the things that go on. Now that's through the Old Testament. We see grace extended to Noah, Moses, David. <coughs> Excuse me. Getting old, my tired old throat, amen. Anyway, we see the grace of God coming through the Old Testament, that same grace that says in the New Testament, which we're fixing to go into, amen. What is grace? Yes, grace is the unmerited favor of God. Grace is the love of God. Grace is the concern of God for his people, amen. Grace is a personality, a trait, if you will, of God himself, amen. That even when he knew none would repent, he still left the ark door open seven days for somebody just in case they would. That's how much grace is a part of God, amen. We need to understand grace is not and I've said this before and I got them, I can't reiterate it enough. Grace is not the license to sin, amen? Grace is not your license to go do whatever you want to do. Oh, God's got grace, so no matter what I do, it's covered, I can do what I want. That is absolutely not true. And we're going to see that. We saw it a little bit before. Grace is extending the good things only to those that walk uprightly, amen? Grace is part of grace's purpose is to bring the sinner unto repentance and salvation, seeing that God's grace is extended, that you don't have to have good deeds to initially come to God, amen? God will draw anybody, but once you've come to God, once you've let the grace of God be applied to your life, there's a life you need to live and a way you need to walk that says, God, I'm grateful for your grace, amen? Let's look at the gospel of St. John chapter one and verse 14. Talking about Jesus here, okay? And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, that's Jesus, and we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Amen? Grace and truth. The Lord Jesus was full of grace and truth. And he was sent here to bring us unto salvation, amen. He is sent here to reconcile us to God through grace and truth, amen. We have to understand that grace is not a license to sin and do whatever you want to do. Grace is something, let me tell you what, I feel like God gave me an analogy, an understanding of grace, and it's like this. When you go to the circus, at the circus they've got the the high wire act, they walk the tightrope, okay? They get way above the crowd and these people walk across this thin rope, this, this very thin rope, all those feet up in the air. And below those people uh, is a net, a net hangs there. What is that net for? That net is to catch them in case they fall, amen? The idea is not to fall, the net's there is just in case. Grace is a net there to catch us in case we do fall. <clears throat> not giving us the right to, to fall and sin and live as we would please because grace is there. That is frustrating the grace of God. And we'll look at that in the scripture in a minute too. But grace was given to us to catch us, not when we fall, but if we fall, amen? That's what grace is. Grace is a safety net, amen? Grace is a safety net there for us in case we do stumble and fall. It'll catch us, it'll restore us, it'll save us, Amen? but it's not there to be abused or taken advantage of or thought to be just something there so we can live how we want to live and do what we want to do. That, my friends, is not grace, amen? That is delusion. That is a lie straight from hell, okay? And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth, amen? Jesus Christ came in the flesh, God manifested in the flesh, the Son of God, full of grace and truth, that we might be saved by grace and truth. <clears throat> you can have grace all day long, but if you don't obey the truth, you're not gonna be saved. That grace is there to help you be led and guided into all truth and protect you, but not to be abused, amen? Not to be abused. Grace is not there for our convenience, so we can sin and live like we want to live and do like we want to do and think we're still going to be saved, amen? That is not grace. That is manipulation of grace. 
then that is a wrong answer in the scriptures, amen? So let's go on. Let's look at some more scripture. Romans chapter three, verses 23 and 24. Watch this. This is Paul talking to the church. Very important. Like people like to take this first scripture and make something out of it, but it doesn't work without this, the other scripture, okay? Romans 3 and 23 says, for all has sinned and come short of the glory of God. Amen. Verse 24 say, says, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption of that is in Christ Jesus. Through his blood, through obedience to his word and his truth, we find our salvation. And grace is there to help us get there when we need it, amen? So we see in Romans chapter three that all have sinned and fall short of, or come short of the glory of God, but we're justified freely by his grace through obedience and through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, amen? We need to understand today the grace is not your get out of jail free card or your do what you want to do card. It's not your license to sin. Grace is there to help you not justify your wrong, amen? We need to understand exactly what grace is today and how grace works. There's too many doctrines, too many teachings out there right now that abuse grace, that manipulate grace, that try to take grace in a direction grace was not meant to to go in, amen. Let's drop down to Romans chapter six. We're gonna look at Romans chapter six, verses one through four. Romans chapter six, one through four. It says, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? And Paul's asked the question, so what, should, what are we gonna do? So we're gonna continue to keep sinning so we can have grace? Sin brings grace, so we'll keep on sinning and living like we want to, so grace will be there. Watch what Paul says in verse two. God forbid, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? So we're dead to sin, amen? Grace brought us to that place, but now through the new birth process, being born again, God has brought us through the baptism in Jesus' name, the application of blood, the redemption of Christ through his blood and the adoption to his family through his spirit that bring us to a place where we're no longer have to sin, amen? And he's telling us grace isn't there so we can just do what we wanna do. He said, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Amen, verse three, know ye not that so many of us as were baptized, here it is, into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death? Verse four, therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life, amen, through that baptism. Grace brought us to that place, amen. Grace is there to keep us if we stumble, but grace is not an excuse to sin, I'm telling you. Grace is something God gave us to help us, amen. Not enable us, amen. You know, you heard of enablers, people enable other people. They keep supporting them and helping them even though they don't wanna do right and they continue to do wrong because somebody's always there to bail them out. That's what people think grace is. A lot of these people believe grace is. Grace is gonna bail you out every time you mess up. That's not what grace is. Grace is not an enabler, amen? Grace is there like a net to catch you if you fall, amen? We must understand, we must realize, we must see in the word of God that grace has limits, amen? And we don't need to push those limits, okay? We need to stay within the boundaries of grace. It works perfectly when we do that. When we stay in those boundaries of grace, grace does what grace is meant to do. And it helps us to grow and learn and be what we should be in the sight of God, amen? Let's drop down to Romans chapter six and verse 15 and 16. And this is a continuation of what we just read in the discussion with Paul. <clears throat> verse 15 
Verse 15, what then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? Here he says it again, God forbid. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey his servants you are, and to whom you obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness? So you see, if you obey sin and do sin, it's unto death, it's unto damnation. But if it's unto Christ and unto righteousness, it's unto salvation, amen? So we see clearly right here, grace is not your license to sin and do what you want to do. But grace was something to bring us to Christ and grace is something that helps us in times of weakness. It's not something to enable us and continue to allow us to sin and live like we lived before. What would be the purpose, amen? What would be the purpose of the Lord spilling his blood and doing what he did if that's how it was? He could just leave us like we were, amen? But no, Paul makes it very clear here in Romans that grace is not there for us to sin freely and willfully. Grace is to help us see, understand, be led into all truth, and then walk through God's spirit in righteousness, amen? How about that? Very important. We need to know these things so much. So many abuses out there, so many doctrines and teachings in churches that just utterly, completely abuse grace and make grace of none effect, amen? Let's drop down to the book of Galatians, chapter two. I wanna get some scripture and I want you to see clearly in the word of God what the word of God says about grace, amen? This again is Paul talking, this is again Paul talking to the church at Galatia, okay? Galatians chapter two, verses 20 and 21. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Watch this. I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. We don't want to frustrate. And obviously, if he says this, you're able to frustrate the grace of God. And the way we do that today is by taking grace as our, like I said, your, your license to sin and do what you want to do and just abusing it, amen? That frustrates the grace of God. That grieves God's spirit, amen? We don't want to do that. We want to let grace be what grace is and help us, be a helper to us when needed, if needed but on ourselves to follow the word of God and the spirit of God to be led in all truth and to walk in newness of life, amen? And the newness of life means to come out of the old ways, leave the old junk alone in the sin and walk uprightly before God in truth, amen? And do not frustrate the grace of God, amen? Drop down to the book of Ephesians, chapter four. We'll look at Ephesians chapter four, verses 29 through 32. Watch this, watch this. Now, if you could just do whatever you wanted to do, live however you wanted to live, say and be what you wanted to be and grace would cover it, Paul would not have written this to the church at Ephesus, okay? Ephesians four and 29, watch this. Let no, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good, to the use of edifying that it may minister grace unto the hearers. Watch this. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. Now, where in that do you hear that grace is gonna allow you to live and do and act like you wanna do? Let you run around and party and get drunk and act stupid and sin and fornicate and commit adultery and live just any old way you want to because of grace. We see here, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to use of edifying that it may minister grace unto the hearers and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Does that sound like you can do what you want to do and live 
like you want to live because grace is there? Absolutely not. We need to understand what grace is and how it works in our lives, amen? We're to be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven us, amen? Grace, grace is the unmerited favor of God. Grace is the part of God's personality. Grace is the love of God, amen? Grace is not there to abuse. Grace is not there to frustrate we're not to grieve God's spirit by abusing grace. We just read that. Our abuse of grace grieves the Holy Spirit of God. Amen. We are not to grieve God's spirit. We are not to abuse grace. Amen. But understand today what grace is. Grace is God's favor to you to help you in time of need. Amen. Not to do it. Grace is not going to enable you to sin. Grace is going to be there if you do mess up and have problems. Amen. Grace is that safety net to catch you if you fall, amen, but not to abuse and not to take advantage of. Understand today the grace of God is the unmerited favor and love of God toward us, that through grace we're saved, that if we're willing to be born again, then God will get, it doesn't matter what you've done in your life, God extends grace and salvation offer to everyone at least once. It doesn't matter how you've lived, if you have a heart toward God and decide you want to be saved, if God draws you and you respond, grace says, come on in. doesn't matter what you've done. But after that, there is a life to live for God. Amen. There's a, a, an attitude of gratitude that we should have to God for salvation. Amen. And want to show that grace and mercy and love to others. Praise the Lord. This is grace. I wanted to present this to you. I felt led in the spirit of God to bring grace for exactly what grace is. Amen. Lord bless you. I appreciate you. I hope if you got any questions or anything you want to know, you'll feel free to get in touch. We can talk in any way we need to to help you see truth and bring you and guide you through the word of God and his spirit into all truth. Amen. Lord bless you. I appreciate you.